ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> we Welcome a... to today's roundtable discussion with our host, Building America's Future. This is their 50th stop on America's Future <laughs> tour. My name is Mayra Flores. I am the first. <laughs> I am the first Mexican-born Congresswoman sworn into Congress in 2022, and I'm here today to moderate this important discussion. Building America's Future is a 510C C4 that was created to inform and empower Americans to take ownership to our country's policy direction and demand that our government at all levels enact policy reforms to improve the lives of Americans. We need to make America's future great again. Today, we are joined by some very special guest, President Donald J. Trump. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Army Captain Sam Brown, U.S. Senate candidate, candidate here in Nevada. Bob Unanue, CEO of Goya Foods. Additionally, we are joined by six Hispanic Americans from this community who have been impacted by the Biden administration, Biden-Harris administration's policies. They're here to show their stories and how this administration has negatively impacted their lives and has stopped them from moving forward. And we're here to change that. Lydia Ruiz Dominguez, a mother, author, Air Force veteran. We have Brian Ursua, a husband, father of five, proud Teamster Local 631 member. We have Elias Trujillo. And now we have also Linda Fornos. We have Iris Ramos Jones. And we have Rafael Arroyo. We know President Trump has built one of the strongest economies ever, lifting up all Americans, especially the Hispanic community. Under President Trump's leadership, the Hispanic community saw a record low unemployment and low poverty. As part of this immediate plan to help our economy recover from this disastrous economic policies from the Biden administration, Harris administration, President Trump has pledged to eliminate taxes on tips so that Americans can keep more money in their pockets. I want to share my father's story, Saul Flores. Back in 2016, he was with her. And in 2020, he voted Republican for the first time. And he voted for President Trump because under his administration, his trucking company was thriving. He saw that his policies empowered his company. And he said, even though I still don't agree with, every, with him on everything. I love his policies. And I will be voting for him in 2020. Thank you. But he went from being with her in 2016 to voting for president in 2020. And now he's all in for President Trump. And I know that is not just my father, meaning Hispanic Americans have seen what the Biden administration have done 
to their lives. We all have less money in our pockets. We want to be able to take our children to a vacation. We want to be able to take care of our families. And that's exactly what President Trump will do when we get him reelected in November. And now, speaking, Bob Unanue. Before we get to our important discussion, I'm thrilled to be your moderator today. And I would like to introduce a great American and the CEO of Goya Foods, Bob. He's a leader with a spine of steel and a heart of gold. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Bob Unanue. Thank you, Myra. And, and you know, you're so important for, for Texas. You know, I've been down with you a couple of times. And I remember you telling me your father said you convinced him <laughs> to vote uh, your way with in God, family, work, freedom. Uh, he said, you, you asked him, why did you vote? Uh, conservative Republican. He says, my party has abandoned me. They've abandoned him. And they've abandoned many Latinos. Uh, and that's why we're here today. And our future is at stake. Uh, I want to also recognize Captain Sam Brown, who uh, at a young age <laughs> these are people who put their life on the line. And when I see servicemen, I say, not just thank you for your service, thank you for our freedom. We have freedom, we take it for granted. <laughs> and, if we don't, and if we don't get it back, we're going to lose this country. And that's why we're sitting next to the greatest president of our time, Donald J. Trump. Amen. Thank you. The song goes, those were the days, my friend. Some of you are old enough to remember that. I thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance forever and a day. And that's where we were under President Trump. I call them days, que buena, so good. I call the days we are today, que mala. <laughs> How bad has it gotten? How bad has it gotten? It's gotten bad. Under President Trump, our economy was cruising. The best economy ever. Prosperity. We had a safe world. No wars. We had no inflation. Virtually no inflation. We had freedom. Under President Trump, our real average weekly wages were up 8.4%. I'll say later on, under this administration, is down 3.4. We cannot keep up with the cost of this administration that is hammering not only the Hispanic community, the African-American community, all communities. The border was secure. Illegal immigration was at a minimum. Yesterday, the CPA, CPI uh, index came out hotter than expected at 2.4%. And this is on top of year after year. And, and uh, we've had over the years 5.4% inflation. This is on top of historic inflation. Overall prices are up to 20.5%. But let me tell you, I'll t steal a phrase from Mr. President. That's fake news. For Goya, <laughs> it's up more like 50%. We, you know, we will go out to buy cans. We do a lot of canning. Come to Brookshire, Texas, and we'll show you how we can at 2,000 cans a minute, very efficient factory. Cans went up 64%. Transportation, ever since the Harris-Biden war on fossil fuels, day one, the Green News scam, the, the pulling out of Afghanistan, we showed so much weakness, they invaded Ukraine. Ukraine is a breadbasket for Europe, and, and Northern Africa. They have wheat, 30% of the world's wheat, 20% of the world's corn, 50% of the world's fertilizer. It tripled the cost of fertilizer. What does that do to our crops over here? It goes way up. Under Kamala, Kamala, real average wage, wages. You know, I don't say that, 
you know, for, to get a buzz or as an insult. It's reality. She is bad. She's bad for this country. She's bad for Latinos. She's bad for all of us. Real average wages were down 3.4 percent. Another, and wages have been up. I mean, our wages have, in, in warehousing and all that distribution, have almost doubled. But they're still not keeping up with the cost of this administration, the burden they put on uh, the, our society. The working class, the middle class, Hispanic and black, uh, his African American uh, populations have been hammered, exploited, used, and abused. It's cost the middle class $2.4 trillion since March of 22. The average middle class household lost $33,000 in real wealth. And you need a six figure salary in about less than half of the country to buy a home. That was day one. But for me, and we can go on and on about this economy, we, we've been hammered. Uh, but for me, the biggest issue under this administration, which I consider evil, and I'll tell you why, is the Hispanic and African American communities being exploited, used, and abused under the greatest slavery in the history of the world. My friend Ben Carson, who's also a friend of the President, said there's more slaves in the world today than in the history of the world. And why is that? Because the only industry that's flourished over the last four years is human trafficking and drugs. We are not just inviting people in, we're bringing people in. Let's ask some of the NGOs. We are actively bringing people in this, to this country for exploitation, millions of people. Uh, last year on April 26, 2023, Tara Lee wrote us, testified before Congress, that the U.S. is a middleman in the trafficking of children. Last year, there were 85,000 children lost. Not lost, they were sold. In my opinion, they were sold. And we're the middleman, as Tara Lee said. Recently, the Inspector General of HHS, Health and Human Services, under Javier Becerra, and Alejandro Mayorkas, Latinos, abusing Latinos, because the Latinos are the biggest target of trafficking. And women are 70% of people trafficked. Children are 25%. Imagine you have a woman uh, taking care of our border, abusing uh, these children. Last, the Inspector General says that 325,000 children are missing. Again, they're not missing, they've been sold. This is pure evil, it's a spiritual war. Back in four years ago on July 9th, uh, 2020, President Trump invited me to be on the White House Commission for Hispanic Prosperity. This administration fired me. I guess they don't believe in Hispanics or his prosperity for Hispanics. <laughs> but I said the word bless. It came on my lips from the uh, Holy Spirit. And I got in a heap of trouble, a boycott. Um, but the president supported me. I guess you, you can call for a boycott. You can't support a company. But he supported us. And uh, we did so well. Uh, AOC, who had called for a boycott, we named her Employee of the Month for Im improving <laughs> our sales so much. Right. But, and I, I, as a Latino, I'm, go I'm probably going over the three minutes. I'm sorry, Myra. Can't Thank you, Bob. Ourselves. God placed his hand, God's hand was placed on Donald J. Trump. Then. continues to, and he will not let go. Look at July 13th at 6.11 in the afternoon, St. Paul's letter to Ephesians, put on the armor of God in this fight against evil. God's hand is on President Trump. He won't take it off. And he's going to bring us to prosperity, to safety. And he's going to lead us closer to God and make America great again. It's my highest honor. You might know this guy, this gentleman sitting next to the, the 
former, current, and future President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Uh, thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you both, and thank you, everybody. And, uh, would you like to